Hello everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Victoria Online. It's lovely to have you here with us today and we're kind of lightening things up a little. I think last week I promised that we'd do that. Things around us are just getting way too serious and while we do have to take some things seriously, I think we also have to take some time to just laugh a little and be playful and have some fun. We need to uplift our own spirits so that we're sending out a better vibe to the whole world than what seems to be coming back at us sometimes. So my, my talk today is titled, God as Bob Newhart. Now, you may wonder what that means. I'm sure you are. Um, basically, I'm looking at God in everyone and everything. God as everyone and as everything. That this divine spark is within each one of us. And so it's in you, it's in me, it's in everyone around us. There are no exceptions and it is in Bob Newhart as well. Bless him. Um, I was thinking about a video of his that I watched a long, long time ago that I really loved. And I would invite you to watch it before you go on with this talk. Now I have posted the link in Facebook with the title of this talk and also on YouTube. Um, so I'm hoping you can pick it up there. But if not, will you please just Google Bob Newhart, stop it and have a look at that now. And I welcome you back. And I hope that you had a good belly laugh watching that video. Um, it certainly is something that has tickled my funny bone for a long time. But why does it fit in with, um, with a message that I might be giving today? Well, it fits in because there are a lot of things in our lives that perhaps are negative uh, or we see them as being negative. They're things that we don't like. Um, there are things that trouble us, things that we worry about. And as Bob Newhart would say, just stop it. You know, and you don't have to pay a dollar a minute for it either. Just stop it. It's perhaps more easily said than it is done. I mean, we, we know that for sure. However, it's, it's such a good way of reminding us that we really need to give up our own ways. We're not bound by our old ways. We, we can start right now, right in this moment, brand new. We can begin a different kind of life. And the way that we do that is by changing the way we look at things, by changing our thoughts. So if we see something that seems to be negative, then let us put a positive spin on it. Let's not just, you know, can continue on the way that we always have. Because, you know, as Einstein said, that's insanity. To do everything the same today as we did yesterday and expect a different result is insanity. So it really is about changing our thoughts. And during these times when many have been quarantined and, you know, a lot of people are really getting tired of that, um, getting tired of this, what's called the new normal. We basically need to find things that do make us laugh and, and that cheer us up a little. So I'm glad that you had the chance to, to look at that today. And so we're faced with how, how we are going to position our thoughts. You know, are we, are we going to be in a lot of fear? Are we going to be angry? Are we going to be upset about a lot of things? Are we going to be blaming other people for our lot in life? Um, you know, if, if, we're, if we're doing that kind of thing, then, you know, we're, we're kind of ranting at God. And, you know, and, and you can call God whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference. I happen to call God God because to me, God is not some old man up in the sky. God is, is um, this wonderful presence that is in each and every one of us. It's this divinity within. But if we are ranting at God, then, you know, what I want to say is, you know, stop telling God how big your troubles are and start telling your troubles how big your God is. Because we know that this amazing power and presence can really do anything. It can do anything as long as we set our minds to it, as long as we are determined to make that so. And so we have to, to look at the way that we're thinking. And Ernest Holmes talks about surface thinking and deep thinking. Now, surface thinking is going on all the time, all day. You know, we have thousands of thoughts every day. And they're, pretty, they're, they're super superficial. Some of them are necessary. You know, I might get up in the morning and say, hey, I think I'll have an egg today rather than cereal. Or I think I'll have some oat you know, because it's a little bit cold outside, whatever. Um, or 
uh, you know, I, uh, I think I'll go for a walk. Um, I think I'll do the laundry. I think I'll wash the floors. I think I'll call some friends. Um, you know, they're one thought after another. They're very repetitious. And we tend to think the same things over and over again as well. And as long as they're not negative, they're not doing any harm. Um, and those are, those are what Ernest Holmes would call surface thoughts. Um, they're, they're all about the surface. But when we go deep, when we go really deep, it's different. Let me give you an example of that. Um, let's say that your doctor has said you need more exercise and that you should get out and take a walk. And you should probably walk every day or walk for 45 minutes every other day, whatever it happens to be. And there might be some resistance to that. You know, oh, you know, I've got to get up out of my chair. I've got to stop doing what I was doing and I've got to go and take a walk. I've got to put my runners on. Uh, it might, it's raining outside. Um, I'm going to have to take my umbrella. You know, there could be all kinds of negative thoughts about that. And that's not going to do anybody any good. But when we go deep, what happens is we get out there and we just, we make ourselves go, even if we've had negative thoughts. And as we're walking, we just say, oh, thank you. You know, thank you for these legs that are, are there for me to walk with. Thank you for these knees that allow me to spring forward. Thank you for a healthy body. Thank you for the ability to be able to walk when I know that some people are not able to do that. And look at this beautiful day. Look at the, look at the ocean. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at those, those deep blue, um, color. The blue, the, the, sorry, the deep blue color, in the ocean. And look at those white caps. Isn't that exciting? There's a bit of a breeze blowing. Look at how the, the trees are so green and beautiful. They still are, and we're already in October. And we've got all of this greenery around us, and, and there are flowers still blooming. Look at, look at that garden. You know, there, all those yellow roses are still in bloom, just the way they were a month ago, two months ago. It's extraordinary. I'm so grateful for life. I'm so grateful for this beauty. Oh, listen to the birds singing. Isn't that a lovely song? Look at the sky. Clear blue sky, sunshine. You know, those puffy white clouds. Everything's so lovely. That's about being in the moment as you're walking. And when you're in the moment, you're being mindful. And when you're being mindful, you are connecting with that source that you are, that power that is within you. You're, you're deeply connected to it because you are expressing gratitude. And, you know, as is often said, the, the greatest prayer of all is thank you. Just those two words, thank you. So, are we going to live on the surface, which can get slippery and slidey, or are we going to live in the deep? It's really, really time for us to make a decision. If we want to have happier lives, if we want to be more joyful, then, then let's start living from the inside out, instead of just living on the outside and letting everything on the outside affect us one way or another. It's just just not a healthy place to be. It's It's time that we look at things differently. And if we're going through a lot of fear, maybe we have to look at ourselves and think, you know, it's my job. It's my job to be fearful until I can imagine what, why I'm fearful and what I'm going to do about it. Maybe that fear is there for us so that, you know, we'll come up with a solution to it. We'll come up with a better idea for ourselves. And if we're if we're really connected to the divine, deeply connected inside. And by that I mean taking the time to connect ourselves, not to just have a flippant thought here and there that, oh, it's going to be okay. You know, just, you know, the voice is coming from the neck up. There's no passion in it down below. Instead of, I know that everything's going to be okay. I know that because God is my partner in this. I know that I am a creative being. I know that I was born to create. It's one of the reasons why I'm here on this planet. And so I'm going to create something better right now. And I was remembering, as I was thinking about this yesterday, I was rem remembering many years ago, I was in Switzerland um, for a family emergency. And I was there for an extended visit. And while I was there, I got a message from my landlady saying that um, her son was coming back from university unexpectedly. 
and that she really needed my place for him to, to move into. And so I was going to have to move at the end of the next month. Well, I could have gone into sheer panic. Here I am, you know, on another continent and having noticed that I have to move at the end of the next month, which meant that I had about 35 days and I was still going to be in Switzerland for another few weeks. I could have been on online looking for places to rent, um, you know, contacting friends, getting working myself into a frenzy, thinking, what am I going to do? But instead, something in my soul just said, you know, you're right where you belong right now. And when you get home, if you don't have a place to go to, then just pack up your things and put them in storage. Go and stay with a friend for a few days until you find something or a few weeks if necessary. This is not anything to be worried about. God is in charge here. God is absolutely in charge. And so I was, I was peaceful with that. I wasn't worried about it. And when I got home, I just immediately started packing things up. And I, I packed things up to go into storage, and then I put aside the things that I would need immediately if I were staying with a friend. And I sent out a message to all of my friends saying, I'm looking for a place to live. Uh, I have to move within a few days. I've just come back from Switzerland. If you know of anything, if you have any leads, please let me know, um, and I'll follow through with that. Well, the next day, I had a message from someone that I didn't know very well. I had met him years ago, but he was a good friend of a friend of mine. And he said that she had just told him what my circumstances were. And he said, I'm in China. Um, and he said, uh, I'm going to be here for at least a year. I'm teaching here. I'm teaching English as a second language. And, and he said, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time here. I really don't know when I'm going to be coming back. But he said, if you would like to, to stay at my place now, you're most welcome to do that. Move your things in and just make yourself comfortable. And then the gift in it all was, he said, I happen to live in a condo where I'm not allowed to rent it out to anybody. So I can't charge you any rent, and I won't. As long as you'll pay the utilities, that would just be great. Well, does it get any better than that? I mean, if I had been fussing and fuming while I was in Switzerland and trying to find um, a place to live by going online and looking at rentals and so on, I might have missed that opportunity. But instead, I was putting it out to the universe, putting it out there to God. You know, this is, this is all going to work. So that's the difference between superficial thinking, you know, the panic thinking, or even just the things that really are not that important, and really going deep. And, and being in alignment with the one God. We need to remember that. Now, I'd like to say that I'm always there, and I'm not. I'm human. I have human moments more frequently than I would like to admit. But it, do, it does happen. And when it does happen, I now look and say, okay, what is it here that I need to learn? What is it I need to learn about me? And what might the solution be? And how can I shift this around? How can, I, how can I make a change? And when I really pay attention, when I really listen, that change starts to, starts to happen. And it is powerful when it does. The thing we need to remember is, each one of us is a divine idea. That may sound strange if you've not heard it before, but we are a divine idea in the mind of God. Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of this teaching, was a, a student of Jesus and of um, Thomas Troward and Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, to name but a few, but they had, they had the greatest influence on his life and on his teachings. And Emerson, of course, said that we are all the divine at our core. That's where God lives, at our core. And so, if that is so, then we have, we, we have been and are divine ideas in the mind of God because everything is created. Everything is created through ideas. And so we were created as an idea of God. And when we, when we really understand that at a deep level, we start to understand that everything on this planet is connected. Absolutely everything. You know, the chair you're sitting in, the computer that you're using the or the phone, whatever it is you happen to be viewing at this moment. 
everything outside in nature. Everything is connected. I'm connected to you. You are connected to me and to everyone you've ever met and to all of, the, all of those that you haven't met. And so it's important that the vibe that we're putting out is a really positive vibe, a really good one, because it is going to help make the world a better place. With all that has been happening this past week, and I think I say this almost every week, it seems that things get worse and worse. But with all that has been happening, we can't allow ourselves to sink into the depths of despair. There's no point in doing that. We need to remember who we are. You know, you are God's precious child. God's, God's perfect miracle. Think about that. Think about the miracle of life. You know, how you grew from this tiny egg in your mother's tummy. How remarkable that is. Where did that egg come from? How, how did this all become possible? When in history did it become possible? There are so many miracles around us every day. And yet, some of us have a problem believing in miracles. Believing that everything is possible. It's a matter of really being in our faith. Absolutely being in faith, knowing, knowing this. And as, as Ernest Holmes said, you know, we have to clear out the underbrush from beneath us. It's kind of like clearing the underbrush from a forest so it weren't, won't burn terribly. You know, we have to clear out that underbrush that is around us, the negativity, the things that have been taught to us from the time we were first born. The, the ideas that we grew up with that are less than healthy. And right now we get to choose again. We get to choose to see life as a wonderful, wonderful experience. We get to be grateful for everything that we have. We get to be grateful for experiences that we might have named not very good at some time. Because along the way, it might even be a few years later, we get to see what the gift was. What was the gift in that? And as we get deeper into our spiritual teachings, we find that we, we discover those gifts a lot faster than we, than we used to. So, so what are the gifts in your life that you might have looked at at one point that you didn't, you didn't feel were, were such wonderful things that were happening to you? you know, take a look at those. Take a look at what residue there might be that might be sticking to you. Take a look at your thoughts and, and think about how you might change them. What you might do today to, to make everything in your life be better than it was yesterday. You know, listen to what, listen to what Einstein had to say. We can, we can make that change. We can change our thoughts today. And the thing is, if we change them today, we can't slip back. You know, we can't clear the underbrush today and then wake up tomorrow and say, oh, I missed a whole lot of it. You know, we've got, we've got to just clear it and clear it and clear it until it is gone. You know, let us not blame our mothers, our fathers, our teachers, our siblings. Let's not blame anybody else for our lot in life, whatever it might be. We are completely responsible for where we are. Now, we had a lot of help along the way. But we get to choose what it is that we're going to accept. And so right here and right now, let's make a choice about what that's going to be. Let's make a choice. Let's, let us run toward the God that is the core of our being. Let us run toward health, not toward illness. Let us run toward ease rather than struggle. Let us run toward an abundant life rather than one of poverty. As we focus our thoughts upon those things, our lives begin to change. And the trick is that we have to keep that focus. You probably hear me say that over and over and over again. Are we going to stay stuck in surface thinking and just kind of slide over things, not ever allow ourselves to go deep? Just say, well, this is the way that I was born. This is what's been given to me. This is the hand I've been dealt. 
or are we going to deal new hands for ourselves? Are we going to write new scripts for ourselves? Are we going to be the directors of our own lives? Are we going to make them better and better and better every day? This is the opportunity right here and right now. If you see yourself sinking down into dark places or wanting to complain about things or thinking you're going to get buried alive in a box, as Bob Newhart said, just stop it. Just stop it. We really need to, to take this seriously. And every day, let's do something that's uplifting. You know, it, it was interesting because I, I found this old, old, old video um, online, and then there are so many more of them. And they're wonderful videos um, uh, from Cheers and from, uh, oh, from um, Frasier, from some of those wonderful comedies that were on television many years ago now. I used to, before I went to bed at night, Frasier used to be on every night at 11.30. This was now a number of years ago. And I used to watch it at 11.30 every night, and I went to bed laughing. You know, isn't that better than going to bed being terrified about what's going to happen when you wake up tomorrow? Let us find ways to lighten our days every day. And let us carry joy in our hearts, because as we do, we'll find that we become happier and happier, more joyful beings. And we'll be sending out a vibe to the whole universe that is going to make things change everywhere. Let us no longer look at the dark side. Let us raise ourselves up into the light. You are God's precious child. It's yours to do. And I know you can. And so it is. Thanks for being here today. Um, if you um, would like to join us in person on Sundays, we are at the Cook Street Village Activity Center in Victoria. It's uh, 380 Cook Street. Our services are at 11 a.m. Our meditation is at 1030 and we welcome you there in person. We are observing all of the prot protocols that are necessary right now. We do ask that if you come, you bring a mask. If you forget, we have them, and we want people to wear them throughout the service, and especially if they're singing, because we know that that can be an issue. And also, if you stay for coffee afterward um, or for some refreshments, um, then um, uh, please observe social distancing during that. We can still chat and, and experience that, that distance. It's not the happiest thing for us to do, obviously, but it is the right thing for us to do. And we, pl we plan to continue to do this as long as it is necessary. Just know that you're as safe as you can be. We will take your temperature at the door. There is hand sanitizer. As I say, there are masks. And um, and, and we're taking great care. And next Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. And so if you join us, we've got wonderful pumpkin pie and whipped cream and tea and coffee for you after the service. And we invite you to bring um, some food and drop it off for um, the mustard seed. We'll take it to the mustard seed after the service. The, um, you know, bring canned goods, bring things that are prepackaged where the packages haven't been broken anything that is going to help a family in need right now. And there are indeed many, many families in need. So we, we welcome your contribution. And if you would like to contribute to um, our financial, um, our, our baskets at the center, um, please just go on to our website, cslvictoria.org, and you can make a donation there. You'll see the, the donate button. It'll be through PayPal, but you can do that on your credit card. You don't have to have a pay PayPal account to do it. Just follow the directions carefully, and it works really well. Thanks for being with us today. Look forward to seeing you again, and just sending you much love and many blessings and a big virtual hug to everybody and a, a great big laugh for everyone today. Let us feel the joy in this moment, and so it is. Bye for now.